how to get the most out of transcribing. Dr. Clapper, uh, big fan and fellow tax player from Austin. Nice. Thank you. How do you implement transcriptions into your existing language? Did you predict my video? No kidding. I was actually gonna make a video about this. Um, I can't play my saxophone, so you probably have to wait for a full demonstration. But yeah, basically the thing about like incorporating language is, uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain right now. I, I don't want to give you the wrong ideas. So I'm gonna try to like, like before I plan it out and make the video. Cause I actually have a video on how to do that. Like how to get the most out of your transcriptions. So when you, um, when you're transcribing, you wanna make sure you get all the details all the details don't just get the notes that's my number one event my number one advice to you don't just get the notes matter of fact you know yeah um don't just get the notes uh definitely also get the rhythms and the um like uh the swing like the timing there's some people would say phrasing i find phrasing a difficult problematic word because uh, it's not very clear what is meant by it because literally phrasing well actually i think somebody's gonna actually say phrasing let's talk about it then you know what go ahead i'm, I'm gonna do an example just forget it I'm, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna do an example for you right now <laughs> the solo i'm gonna give you as an example how to incorporate language all right and incorporate language into your playing this is not just incorporating notes but how much are we actually taking from these transcriptions that's super important so let me get my horn out real quick, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Well, this is not a transcription. This is just uh, this is just me. I know this song already. I'm just trying to give you an example of, like, not, like, the wrong way, but, like, the inefficient way and the thing you shouldn't be doing when transcribing and the thing that you should be doing while transcribing. I want to make a proper video on this, but <laughs> it's like, hey, maybe, maybe this will be the video that we put up. Um, but, yeah, so when you're transcribing, check yourself. If you're only if you're only doing one thing when you transcribe, um, so let's go ahead and check this thing out. And I'm gonna play an example of what I hear a lot of people do. Most people do with transcriptions that I want to hear less of. I don't want to hear this anymore. <laughs> like like I want people to understand how much they have to get into the details of the song. It's gonna be really hard. I, this solo means so much to me. So it's gonna be really hard to play this like this. But I'm gonna just play like kind of the first four or eight bars or whatever of the solo and. Show you what I'm talking about. Here's here's Charlie Parker's Just Friends. Charlie Parker with Strings, Just Friends. That's a great album. Definitely uh, check it out. What was wrong with how I just played? I don't think there was anything wrong with it. But I did notice that he tried to look like he was not giving it his all. So uh, that's probably the, where it's going, right? I know there was a, a note that I missed. But besides that one note, what was wrong with what I played? Can anybody in the chat tell me? If you can't tell me, that's okay. I'm just going to play it again. And then I want you to tell me what I was doing. Now I want you to now I'm gonna play it again this way, the way you're supposed to play this. Alright? Here we go. So now he was actually, uh, I could also see he was more into it, right? Was moving more. So that has nothing to do with what's sounding, but it does help if you watch it. But uh, if he sounded now, tried to sound more like Jada Parker with the target nodes and the um, articulation. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. You said the style. Okay, all right. Fair. That's a fair answer, and I appreciate it. But I want you to get more specific now. So if you're talking about, thank you, Nico. That's the answer I was looking for. <clears throat> I was going to do a little clip in here. Well, th this is what I mean. Like, So dynamics, yeah, for sure. Right? That's just when you play louder and 
less loud. So in this case, you could say by those accents. The phrasing, well, that is a word that I don't really know what it means uh, exactly. Because I think literally phrasing would be where you start, of, like where you start and stop, that's a phrase, right? And then you have to make sure that that has like a kind of a, a line into it. But I'm not sure what the exact ingredients are into making something a good phrasing or bad phrasing. The sound, yeah, I was, I was trying to play more with the vibrato of a, of a Charlie Parker hat. And the intention is, yeah, it's like the... the, the it's like <laughs> not looking bored while you play it. So that's also a big difference, right? You notice, like, the first time he was, I think, intentionally trying to look like he was not not enjoying it. So that that is an important part of it. But yes, dynamics, phrasing, sound, intention, also intonation, also articulation, also swing feel, also... Oh my. I think those things that he mentioned at the end are even more are more important. That's what I would say. Swing feel, articulation, uh, intonation. Yeah, that's, of course, a very spe saxophone specific, not very uh, relevant to guitar, but probably very important if you play saxophone. Oh my gosh, wait, what? Really? All this stuff is in the solo? It's like, bro, yes. This is all you, you need. When you're transcribing these solos, you absolutely need to do all that stuff. You can't skip it. You can't be like, I got these notes because I want to be hip. I got these notes because I wanna I wanna play like this, such and such and but it's like okay well if you wanna play like this person, are you actually playing like them? <laughs> it's important to, to to know that. But then like you know obviously people are like okay I don't wanna copy people I don't wanna such as I don't wanna be a carbon copy. Do you know the real reason why you're supposed to learn how to sound like these people? Do you understand why? It has nothing to do with becoming a carbon copy. It's a multivitamin for learning your instruments. I actually hit my elbow, but I'm I'm glad that it shook the camera for effect. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the notes. I don't care about the notes. The notes don't matter. You know, you if the notes if it was just a note, just put in an E2 book somewhere and just with a, like an Omni book or something, which I don't use. I don't, you know, I started off with it, but I I didn't need you know, I don't remember none of that stuff from that. I, I learned it because I listened to it. You know, it's 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 important to understand that when you're transcribing these these songs. You need to get every detail of it because it's going to teach you what you need to do. You got to imagine it, right? Use your imagination. Use your skills to guide you to get to the next part, the next level. <laughs> to get to the next level, sorry. To get to the next level of your playing. And that's the best way to do that. So you got to actually go through kind of piece by piece if, if, if you have to. If you're not used to listening for those details, you got to go piece by piece. You will get more out of eight bars of, of transcribing like that than you will of getting a solo a week and putting it on Instagram for people to learn. Like, if you do a solo a week for a year, that's 52 solos. Do you remember solo number 37? Probably. Uh, you know, I, I think it depends. So the thing is, though, uh, I understand what he's saying. Like, you have to really dive deep into this one thing and learn it, like, in all details. But this is also very saxophone dependent, of course. Um, um, if you learn Charlie Parker solo on guitar, there's lots of stuff that you really cannot capture, like the vibrato. Well, on Gypsy's guitar, there is actually vibrato, but like on a on an art stop, the vibrato is not a very big thing, so you don't want to spend time on that. Uh, the articulation on the guitar just works very different. So, yeah, if you do a saxophone on a saxophone, uh, learn a saxophone on a saxophone, learn a saxophone solo with your own saxophone, then it's really worth diving into all that stuff. But if you, let's say, want to learn... 20 Charter Park uh, solos on guitar, uh, why not? <laughs> I mean, even saxophone, why not? But there's really not much that you can take from a saxophone that works on a guitar specifically that's very saxophonistic, right? Like um, that articulation specifically, if, if we talk about the dynamic articulation, right? you can do that on guitar, but you don't, have to, you don't want to do it too much. You don't want to be... It just doesn't sound on guitar, especially not on a gypsy jazz guitar. It doesn't really sound... Great. It sounds more like you're struggling. So, um, yeah, a transcription being very precise is very important, but I think it's better to have some universal parameters, like swing, swing feel, like you said. Um, uh, int intention could be something. But the, the right notes is important. Um, maybe some target notes, like I'm going for this, for this C. Something like that, but... Further than that, on a guitar, like you have the pick, you have lots of stuff that get in the way of trying to sound like a saxophone. You don't want to try like sound like a saxophone. So I don't really agree 
to the extent that if you don't really capture Trader Parker's vibrato and his the exact breathing patterns on your guitar, then it doesn't. You didn't really do a transcription. I think the most important part of transcription is to just learn how to connect, how certain people connect uh, the chord progressions that we talked about. Probably not. Did you write it down? That's a problem. Stop writing it down. You got to transcribe stuff. No, I, I would definitely write stuff down if you want to. If you don't want to write it down, don't write it down. But I like writing it down just for the simple fact that sometimes I think about a solo and I think, oh, there was this great thing that happens in the, in the A part of uh, Take the A Train. And I, instead of me having to go to the recording and listen to it again, I can just look in my Gmail, because I sent everything to my Gmail, find the transcription, then listen to the recording, of course, also, but then it's already transcribed. I can already see it. Just this process is just much quicker. Also, when I want to share it with someone else or make a YouTube video, well, that's very specific to me. But still, I would actually recommend writing it down. Another thing I do is once I've written down lots of solos, so let's say Django, I make like categorizations. Like, okay, like when it's rhythm changes a part, these are the ideas that Django has. And you cannot make that categorization if you don't write it down. Then you have to do all in your head, you will forget stuff. If you write it down, you have this nice PDF, in my case, and you can see, okay, so eight parts of Django, these are all his ideas. Uh, two, five, one, in a in an up-tempo uh, tune, these are his ideas. And I, I write books about that. I think that's something that you can only do when you write it down. So I would definitely write stuff down if you want to. And I know lots of people that actually do write stuff down. Uh, what do you think slowing down a solo to describe? Should someone describe a solo its actual tempo or is it okay to slow down? No, definitely slow it down. Right? You want to make stuff as easy for you as possible. Uh, transcribing is already kind of a frustrating process, especially in the beginning. Definitely slow it down. Use every tool you can to get the right notes, to get the right rhythms. And then, of course, listen to it at full speed and, and, and practice it yourself until you can f play it at full speed. But I would use every tool you can. Let's say there would be AI that can uh, describe a solo for you. You'd be crazy not to use it. <laughs> I mean, that will just speed up the process. Let the AI transcribe the whole thing. Check it, of course, if, it's, uh, if there are mistakes. And then start working with the transcription to get good uh, swing feel, to get the good target notes, to play it in the right rhythms. I think those parameters are way more important than going to the for the for the tiny, tiny details, especially when it's in a um, transcription from another instrument. Like if I do a jungle transcription, yeah, I want to get all the little slides, like, like, um, right, that's this little, but here's the thing. If, if I would show this phrase to Patrick Bartley and he would do it on the saxophone and he would start doing, that will sound very techy on the saxophone. I know that because I've heard that. So then I would just actually recommend not doing it. <laughs> so that that going very deep into the um, the way it sounds by the original player, it's very uh, speci instrument specific. Um, yeah. By ear, and you gotta get with it. When I was teaching my students at University of Miami, you know what we did? We're doing two solos. That's it. I may maybe if we got time, I want to throw in a third one. But it's just two solos. We got an entire semester and we're doing two solos. Oh, man, he's wasting my money. It's like, <laughs> okay. So every week we do one chorus. They sound great. All my students are killing. I'm like happy. Uh, there's not a lot I got to do. But the point is... Of course, these students were already in a university. Right? <laughs> they, they probably sounded great to begin with. Otherwise, they wouldn't be accepted. Um, that, just consideration. When I hear people playing some of these solos, they'll get the notes and they're not like... You got to understand the space between the notes. You got to understand the sound. Space between the notes so that swing. I agree with that. The concept. The airflow. Airflow, that's very saxophone specific. Concept. I'm not sure if you can hear the concept if somebody knows the concept. For instance, go back to um, like um, Stokolo. Like he, he has no idea what he's doing. Oh, Of course he knows what he's doing, but like... Like conceptually, he wouldn't be able to explain anything, not even like the, the difference between major and minor. But still sounds great. It plays with great style, great sensitivity. Because so, he just knows how it sounds and how it should be played. But so if you hear that, you might think, oh, he know, conceptually he knows exactly 
for how this works and how to explain it. But he, actually, he doesn't. Because I've, I've been in the workshops with him many times, like even very simple stuff. Like you ask him a very simple question about vibrato or about um, like a diminished run or something. He wouldn't be able to explain anything about it. He, he could show you. But even then, when he plays it slowly, everything changes. Fingering changes, picking changes. Right? Uh, so it's... The, the concept is not very important to the end result if you understand the concept. It's more about if you know on which chord to play it, like uh, the chord name, but maybe also the chord voice. Like if you say, okay, if this is the chord voice, I can play. That's enough, right? So <clears throat> let's go back to the list that uh, Patrick was giving here. Archie, and they're not like... You got to understand the space between the notes. Okay, swing timing. You got to understand the sound. The sound. So that, I think, is, again, is probably very uh, saxophone-specific because I don't think it would make much sense for him to look at the sound of West Montgomery. Like, lots of West Montgomery actually have very bad sound because the, the amp was not recorded really well. There was lots of reverb on it. So does that mean that you wouldn't uh, listen to West Montgomery for the face? No, you still would. Sound's just not very important. The concept concept we talked about the airflow airflow very uh, specific for instruments I like a piano player wouldn't really listen to the airflow of Chet Baker or something it's not very important articulation articulation is important if we talk about notes that are short and long for instance <clears throat> um, if we have this lick uh, but then this G is short you don't want to be playing you could, but it kind of loses the um, intention, right? So, in that case, articulation is very important. That's the kind of stuff. So, how do you put the solos into your language? Well, you learn how to play like that so that every single note you play after that has meaning behind it because you learn how to play something with meaning. So, just to give you a little example of what you can do, because, it's again, it's hard to play the, the wrong way, not like or like the, the lazy way, you know, but... So, um, what is the wrong way, though? I think if, if the wrong way for me would be that you're rushing, the time it's not swinging, you're playing the wrong notes, um, um, everything has a, it's the same uh, dynamic, right? It's all very mono monotonous. That would be, for me, the wrong way. You got you to gotta get everything. Like, when you try to imitate somebody, you know, it's like I said in, the, in the, one of my other videos, you know, you're trying to imitate somebody, you're, you're getting... You got to think about all the different sounds. <laughs> you got to think about all the different sounds that make up that that person's voice when you're imitating them, right? So all the different idiosyncrasies and all kind of stuff like that. So you got to do the same thing for Bird. So obviously... Yeah, but how, how does that work, though? Let's say you play... Um, but you play harp or something. Oh, that's not really jazz instruments. That's... You play double bass, right? <clears throat> How are you going to learn the, the idiosyncrasies of a trumpet? I mean, there's, there's just only so much you can do. I'd be already very happy if a, a bass player is playing a great Clifford Brown. Uh, I mean, that sounds great on bass, even if, if every note would be the same uh, volume. If it's played with great timing in the, at, the, at the right spot and it makes sense in the in the coherency of the solo, so right, what becomes before and after, it's also great. And then, and <laughs> even if it's not, even if the stuff before is bad and stuff after, then at least that Clifford Brown quote or lick would be great. So I don't really agree with that. I understand why it's being said. I think it's specifically talking to other saxophone players. And then, yeah, it makes sense. Obviously, in the first part of the solo, here he's playing light. <clears throat> you hear that. But then you hear some other parts of his sound that are a little different than what usually people would want to play. What about that? Do you know how much is in there? You got to get all of that. I think he's referring to the little um, slide. I think the slide is important. And then it's probably referring to the vibrato. 
But like a jazz guitar player probably wouldn't do the vibrato really. He would probably do something like. Um, for me, it's so, it's so natural to do vibrato, but I know lots of jazz guitar players like Martijn van Eetsen, who was a great jazz guitar player, one of the best, rarely uses vibrato. So uh, he, was, he was referring to some vibrato, but again, like on the guitar, it's just a different instrument and it still would make a lot of sense to describe Trey Parker. Um, just not in the same way as a saxophone player. But, that, but the video is called How to Get the Most Out of Transcribing. And I think that here we get a little problem of only thinking about your own instruments. And it might scare away people like bass players. Or it might be very frustrating for them if they think this is the only way to transcribe Charlie Parker. I don't think that's the way, right? It, you're talking about not, more about, for me, what's important is about the notes that Charlie Parker is playing on which chords and the timing of it. Or maybe only that is already enough for me to be very useful to describe anyone that's great. So you got to find out what that sounds like. Otherwise, you just, you know, anybody can play whatever. You're not doing anything special if, you, if you're just playing, you know. Okay, so what is happening here? He's 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 um, rushing right on purpose, but that's the issue here. It's not so much the other stuff. If this would be with with good timing, then it would be great. Even if he doesn't play it exactly like Bird. Like you know, you can play however you want. It's, it, again, it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's really hard for me to play not what it's supposed to be because I'm singing a solo in my head. Everywhere I go, I'm singing it. I'm, I'm, I'm. It's the everything about the song in the solo is sitting through my head, and it's going over and over and over again. So that way, whenever you play some stuff, now I can play some stuff that's kind of like bird sounding, but it's not exactly bird. It's not his solo, right? <laughs> That was great stuff. Sounded like bird to me. Sounded like a lot like Charlie Parker. So it, it sounds like, like a lot like Charlie Parker. Uh, the, the the language for sure, but also the sound. Right, he's trying to do that. But I think if you would play these exact licks on the trumpet, uh, then it would also be great. Even if you don't have exactly Charlie Parker's sounds. Is describing the solo entirely an absolute necessity or a small tone that you like is just fine? Small small tone that you like is just fine. It's different um, different um, uses, right? So an entire solo to describe their entire solo. Now um, you're, we're more talking more like a etude where you're trying to really get into the skin of the, the person that is playing. Not so much like Bart Patrick is talking about here, like get the sound, but more like what it feels like to be a genius. <laughs> right, so if, if I learn a jungle solo, which is useful uh, anyway, because in Gypsy Jazz, it's very common to just play a jungle solo, maybe even with a couple of guitar players, just as kind of a, that's a thing in Gypsy Jazz. So it's useful for that anyway, for a gig. But other than that, being able to play a jungle solo with a back and track or in a jam, it gives you, it shows you what it feels like to play a solo like that. And that is very useful in itself, I think, because uh, it teaches you a lot about like <clears throat> building up a solo, uh, getting to a uh, climactic moments, um, have some really nice, um, very guitar guitaristic things in there. So th for that reason, learning an entire solo is great. If you if you just want to learn language that you can use in your own improv, then I would say it's kind of a waste of time to learn a whole solo. Then just learn the the parts or the phrases that fit over the progressions that we talked about and start there. Like my book, my third book, it's about that. I show these progressions and I show what Django is playing in the 30s. It's right? very specific. And then I'm, um, now I'm writing a book about bebop. It's got to be the same thing. I show the progressions and I show what bebop players are playing on those progressions. Uh, but I've learned tons of complete Django solos. But that's more of a... Of a a practice tool to learn how to play guitar in that style, like or technically even. 
or like for the vibrato, like what Pratuk is talking about here. And so I do agree with him when we would be talking about um, learning a solo for those reasons. But it's not, I don't think it's the answer to the title of his video, how to get the most out of transcribing. Because I think more important than anything is to learn how to improvise yourself. And then I think his advice will um, not be bad or something, but I think there is a quicker way for it. Right? It's just taking phrases that you like, practicing, practicing them on different tunes, different progressions. And, and so I have transcribed uh, literally um, hundreds of solos, if not in the thousands, like so much stuff. It's, um, it's pretty crazy if you look at my computer. It's also because I have a YouTube channel. So I'm not talking here, uh, I'm not talking like someone who has very little experience with transcribing. I've transcribed so much stuff, um, too much, in fact. It's like it just comes out. Like it's obviously I'm not I'm not playing exact bird. I'm not even trying to like sound like I'm trying to think like him, bro. It's not about trying to that's the thing people don't understand. When you play the inflections, when you play the dynamics, when you play the articulations, you're not sounding like them. You're understanding how to think. Right. So these things are important. Inflections, I would say I would maybe I'm not sure what he means by that exactly, but I would say embellishments. So, uh, let's say you play something like uh, that, that part. I think this is kind of a Clifford Brown thing. Is it Clifford Brown? Or like a, it's a trumpet thing. Very difficult to do on guitar, but to being aware of that you can do stuff like that instead of only doing. You can do. And, and that is very useful. Right? I, I won't be able to make it sound exactly like a trumpet, but this is getting close to what a trumpet would uh, do. So when he says he like think like a uh, bird, I agree with that. Like, okay, let's let's do some trumpety thing in here. Think like them, and understanding the thought process is the most important thing that we need to get when transcribing these people. And the reason why we have to get that is because we need to understand what makes the music sound the way it does and the thought process, the logic. We got to understand the logic behind the lines. And so you got to get every part of it that you can get. There's so many resources. It's like, uh, you know, you're playing like an action adventure game, right? If you're playing like an action adventure game and you're playing like, uh, and there's like the story part. And then there's like, there's like all the extra side quests and all the extra stuff, the extra story, maybe new game plus, whatever, you know. You can play the game however you want. And honestly, if you want to just transcribe the notes and that's it, be my guest. <laughs> if that's really what you want to do, go ahead and do that. But who is just transcribing the notes, though? That, 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 um, there's this thing in um, discussions called... Um, uh, um, like a fantasy. What's the name? Like... Absurdum, like argumentum up, up, up absurdum. So like when you try to show something by going completely absurd to make a point in the opposite way. But that, I think he's doing that here because who is just transcribing the notes? That, that makes no sense. You would also transcribe at least the rhythms. And now we have something, right? If, if you have the notes and the rhythms, you already got something that you can really use. You play it with a lot of uh, sensibility and you can use your own sensibility. You don't have to use exactly what, uh, what Horace Silver is doing. Right? Or, or Wes Montgomery, or Barney Kessel, or Chitty Parker. If you know, okay, um, this is good timing, and you have the notes, and you know the chord, then you have something already. So the point he's making here, I, I don't really necessarily agree with that, that it doesn't mean anything if you don't get everything from the original uh, player. But you cannot complain that you're not getting enough out of the music. You cannot complain that uh, 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 you can't play. You can't complain because you're you're missing out on so many so much more, you know, because the game when you complete the story, you might you might only be doing like fifty eight percent of the game. So there's like an extra forty two percent of the game. That you yeah, but <laughs> so if who is doing all the side quests though? Like he's talking about he said he's saying he's making the point like if you play like Grand Theft Auto something like that or um, 
Uncharted, or Uncharted doesn't have many side quests, but uh, let's say um, Cyberpunk. You can only do the story, and then he compares that to people that only write down the notes. Uh, but or you can do all the side quests. So that in Grand Theft Auto, that means that you have to land in like uh, 500 different spots with a parachute and get all the uh, collectibles. It's gonna take you forever, and most people don't do that. But if you meet somebody who said, no, I played Grand Theft Auto and I did the story and some side quests, you're never going to tell this person, well, that you, you didn't really play Grand Theft Auto. It, you don't have to actually do all the side quests to be able to say that you are great at a game. Right? Like if you play any shooter, like nowadays competitive shooters like, um, like Fortnite or uh, Apex Legends, they also have quests in it. But like the real pros are not doing those quests, right? They just want to win the game. So they work on essential skills like uh, aiming and uh, movement and positioning. We could say that like aiming in the jazz would be, um, uh, would be timing and movement would be uh, uh, vocabulary or something. Or maybe like um, uh, expanding your vocabulary or something like that. And then positioning would be... Uh, playing the right notes on the right chords. But these are things that are enough if you if you master those elements to the highest level, you're a professional player. You don't have to do all the side quests. You can if you want to, but maybe it's better to actually go to another game and, and learn the essential parts there. So that's what I'm saying. If I want to make the same comparison here as Patrick Bartley, if I compare it to a game, then I would actually say doing all the side quests and getting 100%, probably wasting your time a little bit. Especially when it's not... Uh, your main game, <laughs> like if it's not your main instrument, so um, that may be a funny way to uh, to respond to that. You could be getting, and you don't have to buy another game. You can go ahead and play what the rest of the game has to offer, and then you have a complete experience of it. That's exactly the same thing when you're. <laughs> that's exactly the same thing when you're when you're you're here, when you're playing. Yeah, yeah, that could be the same thing, and and in both cases, I would say maybe it's a little bit too much. Now let's say. You want to sound exactly like Jada Parker for the rest of your life. That's your goal. Then, yeah, then it's very important. But most people don't want that. So then what's the goal of that beyond being able to play that solo like Jada Parker? I'm not completely sure what it is, right? If you can just play the phrases and with good timing and good sound, and nothing else, let's just say like that, then it's probably already enough to be able to uh, use that. Can you go a step further? Yes, you can. Is it absolutely necessary? I don't think so. But that's also coming from somebody that plays guitar. right? Because if I learn a jungle solo, I actually do try to get lots of details. But that is just because it's fun for me to do so. And I only do that actually when I play the complete solo. Because when I just play some jungle phrase within a solo, I'm not necessarily not do that. right? I, I can use different uh, inflections. I can use different interpretation. Uh, and it will still sound great. Anyway, this is, of course, a great video. He does make a lot of good points. Uh, Patrick Bartley, uh, I will put a link to the video in the description. Check him out. Subscribe. Uh, watch his Twitch streams. Give it a like. Uh, I'll probably watch more of his videos in the future. Great stuff.